In a fairly shocking move, two of Inflection's three co-founders are moving over to Microsoft, including one who will be the new CEO of Microsoft AI, this despite Inflection raising over a billion dollars just a year ago. Welcome back to the AI Breakdown. The AI community was quite shocked yesterday when news broke that Mustafa Suleiman, the CEO and co-founder of Inflection AI, was headed to Microsoft to run their new consumer AI division. Inflection is, of course, the maker of Pi, the personal AI that has been trying to do something a little bit different than ChatGPT or Claude or Gemini or anything like that and be a sort of AI companion to people. Still, it was only a couple weeks ago on March 7th when Inflection announced its 2.5 version. They claimed at the time that they had 6 million monthly active users, that the average conversation with Pi was lasting about 33 minutes, that they had 60% week-over-week retention, and that Inflection 2.5 was in fact approaching GPT-4 levels. And so again, this announcement came as a bit of a shock. The way that the news first broke, it seemed like it was just Mustafa Suleiman, the CEO of Inflection, who was leaving. Suleiman was, of course, previously the co-founder of DeepMind, which sold to Google, and his new position at Microsoft was going to be something with the big title CEO of Microsoft AI. He tweeted yesterday, I'm excited to announce that today I'm joining Microsoft as CEO of Microsoft AI. I'll be leading all consumer AI products and research, including Copilot, Bing, and Edge. My friend and longtime collaborator, Karen Simonian, who, by the way, was one of the other two Inflection co-founders, will be chief scientist, and several of our amazing teammates have chosen to join us. Inflection AI will continue its mission under a new CEO and look to reach even more people than ever by making its API widely available to developers and businesses the world over. It's been an amazing journey with so much more to come. Thank you to everyone for your support things really are just getting started. The first reaction from the AI sphere was incredulity. Binu Reddy tweets, Why would you ever give up after raising such a huge investment? Entrepreneurship is resilience above all else. She shared a screenshot of the TechCrunch story from June of last year, announcing that Inflection had raised $1.3 billion at a $4 billion valuation. Neil Kosla writes, This Inflection thing is honestly wild. They raised $1.3 billion nine months ago from Microsoft and were founded less than two years ago. And the CEO just bailed to go work at Microsoft? Is there any historical precedent for this? Story has to be more complex than meets the eye. Journalist Eric Newcomer writes, Yeah, I feel Microsoft's terms with inflection and inflection shareholders are a big black hole. People are writing the narrative here without knowing some key facts. There was also some skepticism of the decision from a personnel standpoint. Israel Gonzalez Brooks writes, Mustafa Suleiman, the non-technical of DeepMind's founders, getting continually funded, promoted, and appointed to positions where he has influence over AI is demoralizing. He's a corporatist statist anti-open source doomer. People in the industry are shocked. Technium went even farther, writing, brain-dead move by Microsoft. Doomer grifter master book salesman hired by Microsoft to lead their new AI initiative. The guy started Inflection just a few months ago, raised $2 billion to fund his book tour, then dips. LMAO. Oh well, I guess this takes Microsoft out of the competition for good models. The book thing that he was referring to is the fact that earlier this year, Mustafa Suleiman released a book called The Coming Wave, Technology, Power, and the 21st Century's Greatest Dilemma. Holding aside any of the details of the book, it did seem weird to folks that the CEO of a company that was less than a couple years old was spending time writing and then promoting a book. So what were the possible reasons that this could have come about? Some speculated that it had to do with the terms of their deal with OpenAI. D. Krantz, for example, tweets, So Microsoft signed a deal with OpenAI until AGI. Now why is Microsoft suddenly investing in other AI companies? Are they preparing for something? The logic here being that if OpenAI is getting closer to AGI, or if Microsoft is afraid that the board is going to say that they've achieved AGI in such a way that it nullifies Microsoft's access to OpenAI models, perhaps they're diversifying ahead of that happening. The much more common analysis, though, however, was that Inflection just hadn't been able to find a sustainable business model and didn't like their prospects going forward. AdaPi summed it up like this. Too much capital and talent needed for next generation. No real way to exit. Reed Hoffman looking to engineer an aqua hire. Microsoft unwilling to bite at $4 billion. So they engineered an earnout deal, allowing founders and research team to leave. Investors get back some capital over time. Surprising, Reed managed to persuade everyone to get this done. Reid Hoffman, who is of course the founder of LinkedIn, a co-founder of Inflection, and a board member at Microsoft, himself tweeted, It's a good day for everyone involved in Inflection AI. I'm excited to work with incoming CEO Sean White, who's been a friend and colleague for more than 20 years. Under Sean's leadership, Inflection will continue on its mission and will reach more people than ever by making its API widely available to developers and businesses all over the world. I'm grateful for the support of early investors, including Greylock, who believed in the company and vision from day one. This agreement with Microsoft means that all of Inflection's investors will have a good outcome today, and I anticipate good future upside. So how is this deal actually structured? The information called it an unusual payout. They write, Microsoft's decision to hire most of the staff of Inflection AI, including the co-founders, leaves the would-be OpenAI rival a shell of its former self. 
But inflection has arranged an unusual deal for investors that should take the sting out of that blow. At the same time it revealed the staff departures, Inflection disclosed a licensing deal with Microsoft to make its models available for sale on Microsoft's Azure, and said that other cloud platforms would follow. It has also told investors that they will fully recoup their investment, and more, as a result of the licensing agreement, according to a person briefed on the arrangement. It's unclear what the size of the payout will be and whether it will come in a lump sum or over time. In addition to the payout, investors will keep their equity, ensuring they can profit if Inflection is bought or goes public. An agreement to pay private startup shareholders before the startup sale or public offering is rare and adds to the unusual nature of the arrangement between Inflection and one of its main backers. The information also speculates that part of the deal structure might have been a goal to avoid regulatory scrutiny of an outright acquisition. As the information writes, Since Microsoft is not buying any assets, only hiring workers, it does not automatically trigger a review from antitrust regulators. Now, the information also had a little bit more details about how the deal started to come together. Apparently, a few months ago, the CEO of Microsoft, Satya Nadella, had approached Mustafa Suleiman and tried to get him to come join Microsoft. That, of course, would have put it right around the time of OpenAI's board troubles. And it seems to me, in many ways, like the deal that they architected with Mustafa and the Inflection team is kind of like what they had planned to do with the OpenAI team, should Sam have remained on the outs from that company. Is it possible that Microsoft actually had started to get excited about the new structure of the team that they would have built around Sam Altman and the rest of the OpenAI crew and just decided to keep pushing for that? Coincidentally, in Elon Musk's lawsuit against OpenAI, the complaint at one point claims, quote, Microsoft CEO boasted that it would not matter if OpenAI disappeared tomorrow. He explained that we have all the IP rights and all the capability. We have the people, we have the compute, we have the data, we have everything. We are below them, above them, around them. There's also a broader line of discussion that this has kicked off about whether it's even possible for startups to compete in this incredibly resource-intensive environment. Ethan Mollick, for example, shared a chart that's been doing the rounds on the companies that had received the most H100 and H800 shipments from NVIDIA this year, with Microsoft and Meta way out ahead of everyone else. Those two companies had each received around 150,000 of those H100 and H800s, as compared to 50,000 for Tencent, Oracle, Amazon, and Google, 40,000 for CoreWeave, 30,000 for Baidu, etc., etc. Ethan writes, It is interesting to see a key truth about the current state of AI play out over and over again. Only a few organizations have the compute needed to train GPT-4 class and beyond models. Key small AI labs may have a lot of talent and ideas, but only four to five tech giants have the servers. Gavin Baker writes, Inflection will likely be the first of many VC-backed foundation model companies to fail. Foundation models without proprietary real-time data and massive distribution for reinforcement learning from human feedback are the fastest depreciating assets in history. Irony is that while models are commodities today, the ultimate future is likely one where there are only a few truly massive models with proprietary real-time data and vast distribution. Only a few will make it, and they will be super valuable. Smaller open-source models will be used for most vertical tasks to save on inference costs. As ever, there are no barriers to entry on the internet, only barriers to scale. And once at scale, the returns are very high. Foundation models are becoming a game of emperors, and the empires on the other side of this winnowing are really large. Respect to the inflation team for trying. They built a great model, just wasn't valuable enough without proprietary real-time data and massive internet distribution. And yes, technically it hasn't entirely failed yet, but I think fair to say has effectively failed. Signal president Meredith Whitaker put it even simpler, writing, There's no such thing as an AI startup, just guys with models competing to be absorbed by one of the three actual AI companies. So now speculation moves on to what this new Microsoft team is going to look like. The information points out that it, quote, has to mean something that a longtime Googler will run Google's only formidable competitor in Bing. Continuing, they write, Suleiman will now need to keep Bing competitive not just with Google, but with OpenAI as well. OpenAI CEO Sam Altman said on a podcast earlier this week that he's interested in integrating ChatGPT with a search engine. They also point out that one of the most challenging jobs will now be of uniting disparate AI teams, which, as they put it, have been grappling with overlapping mandates. However it shakes out, this is a big deal that has a lot to say about the state of AI, and so we will continue to watch it closely. However, that's going to do it for today's AI Breakdown. Until next time, peace.